Welcome back to the Means Report. Thank you to Jane Jenkins Herlong for being with me in my first segment. Hope she makes a lot of money on her book, and then I hope she knows how to invest it. Will Kaywood and the team at the Fairman Investment Group sure do, and we are happy that Will is back with us to help us with our finances. Welcome back. Good to be here, Brad. Well, here we are. We find ourselves near the end of the year, and uh, from my lay point of view, I've watched the stock market, it seems like, do this all year. No. How's it performed so far? So it's been, it's been another good year. I sound like a broken record a little bit. I come on here. Things have been great. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. a wonderful time. But um, no, it really has been. I mean, the third quarter was excellent again. Uh, year to date, the Dow's up 18, 19 mm. percent. Uh, S&P's up 14 to 15. NASDAQ, the, the tech heavy index, is up about 21. Um, if you look from an international standpoint, we talked about it in July, how well international's done. So if you go to certain parts of the world, you're up 20, 30 percent year to date. So it's been a excellent around the, around the world so far. Bonds have done well. Large caps outperform small cap. Uh, growth's outperform value. So it's been a good year. Yeah, but I will say, historically, you have not been afraid to give us the gloom and doom yeah. when it's appropriate. So I know it's, I mean, this man can, can <laughs> be real with us when he needs to be, and I respect that and appreciate that. But yeah, okay, so we're on a little bit of an uptick right now. Yeah. What's causing it, and more importantly, how long can we sustain this? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question or trillion-dollar question <laughs> or, or, or whatever. But uh, from an economic standpoint, there's really not much that scares us right now, which is a little bit scary in itself, right? So when, when there's nothing to worry about, you probably have to worry about something that you don't know about, so a black swan type event. But uh, from a corporate earnings standpoint, things are strong. Inflation's not a big concern at this point. Uh, interest rates are relatively low still, so there's not a lot from an economic standpoint that worries us. If you look, just a, a neat stat I saw the other day, uh, the week of October 16th, just last week, um, every day hit a new all-time high. For the previous six weeks before that, it was a new all-time high. The previous seven months before that, all-time high. We've hit about 60 to 65 all-time highs this year so far, so it's been a, an amazing run. Um, really, we're, since 1900, we've had, this is the third longest economic expansion ever. Uh, so we go back to the, the mid-60s, which you could tell me about that. I, I don't know as much <laughs> sure, as, as sure. I could, uh, as I should. The mid-90s were longer. Uh, we just hit the 100th month of this current economic expansion. And so by the end of it, we think it's going to be the longest and the strongest ever. Uh, but at the same time, there's going to be some more volatility and ups and downs than we've seen. It's not going to be straight up forever. All right. So go back to a year from now during our visit yeah. last quarter of last year and put things into context versus the situation then and now. So. Going back to October, the end of October of 2016, uh, it was a few days before the election. Uh, most polls had Hillary Clinton 90 to 93 percent chance of winning the election. Mm -hmm. It was a very long shot for, for Trump at that point. Figured it was a foregone conclusion. I think most of us just wanted the election to be over with at that point because it had been felt like it had gone on for, for four years itself, the election. But uh, as we all know, Trump wound up winning. Um, most people thought the market would tank or be very volatile once he did because he was kind of an outsider. He's not a traditional politician, which we've, we've learned over the last year. Uh, but it's been anything but that. I mean, if you look at the Dow, last, last year it was trading hands about 18,000. Today it's trading hands over 23,000. So it's been a, a, a great move since then. Um, he probably tweets more than we'd like for him to. I mean, I, I, we all follow him on Twitter probably, or, or we, uh, we find out what he does because that's what, what a lot of the news is, is what he tweets what that he day. What he tweets. Uh, but, you know, reviewing notes from our, our uh, interview last year right after the election in November, the, those five points that we said he needed to, to really do well on to, to be successful, and they were infrastructure, it was health care, it was tax reform, it was trade, and it was looser fiscal policy. So those five things... Uh, he's still, we're still working on all of them, but there seems to be a sense of optimism around uh, the administration that hadn't been there in a few years. Speaking of a few years, go back, yeah. say, 20, 30 years, yeah. all right, just to get a time frame here, and compare the stock market then to now. What's different about it? Is, is, yeah. is the infusion of tech companies the biggest change? That's one of them. I mean, if you go back to 96, I read the stat the other day. Go back to 96, there's half as many companies that are publicly traded today than there were in 1996. So that's just 20 years ago. So there's fewer companies. The reason for that, there's, it's, it's expensive to be a public company. Uh, there's been a lot of consolidation with, within businesses. But um, I think that's interesting because the, the companies that are currently publicly listed are bigger than ever. So they're all, all huge companies. Another interesting stat, you go back to 1980. Um, George won the national championship that year. Maybe that's a good good number. Maybe oh, we man. Can, uh, win another one this year. But, <laughs> that's right. Uh, seven out of the top ten largest U.S. companies in 1980 uh, were oil companies. So it was Shell, it was Exxon, it was uh, Schlumberger, it was uh, Standard Oils of different states. It was, it was those type companies in 1980. 
seven out of the top ten. You fast forward to today, top five out of the top ten largest draw tech companies, that's Apple, it's Facebook, Amazon, Google, uh, Microsoft, those are the top five. So it just shows how much the world has changed just in, in a brief 30 years. You know, you mentioned the <clears throat> unknown and how, you know, maybe something could be coming that could impact the markets. Any potential headwinds that you could talk about now? Yeah, so speaking of winds, unfortunately, the hurricanes uh, were, or, were a big, um, are, are in the news a lot right now with corporate earnings coming in uh, for the fourth quarter, looking back at the third quarter. A lot of companies, especially with uh, Gulf Coast exposure, Florida, Texas, along the Gulf Coast here, uh, have cited the, the hurricane is, is eating into some of the corporate earnings for that that particular quarter. Um, another one is, is the upcoming showdown between uh, on, the, on the debt ceiling that seems to be the, the can being kicked down the road. I mean, it seems to come up all the time. That's December 8th. That'll be in the headlines a lot in the, number of the next uh, couple months. And finally, the, the Fed. Uh, the Federal Reserve is something we talk about a lot. Obviously, if they, if they raise rates too quickly, it could, could uh, damper uh, growth some. If they raise rates too slowly, the market could become overheated. So it's always a balancing act with the Fed. Another key point to, to, to keep in mind is, is uh, Janet Yellen, the, the current Federal Reserve Chairman. Her term is up in February of 18. That's so right. uh, there's one school of thought says we're going to continue with her, another one we're going to look at an outsider. So that'll, that'll be something the market looks at going forward. Well, again, and I know that you know the year is almost up, but uh, can you look at any potential positives coming our way that could help? It's all about tax reform. I mean, I know it sounds uh, cliche, but it, it matters a lot to corporations. It matters to me and you. It matters to everybody. I mean, what, what, what's going to happen with tax reform? If it goes through like they say, there could be as much as 2 to $3 trillion come back to the U.S. from overseas with the repatriation of that cash. We're looking at you know another two to three to four percent uh, growth in the stock market just on that move alone. So um, we're look, also looking at seasonality. We're getting into the, the months of the year. It's my favorite time of the year. Uh, you got November, December coming up. Those are two of the best months historically for the stock market. Uh, so seasonality is on our side. So that, that should push us to a strong end to 2017. All right, I like the way this interview went. I don't want to be overly optimistic, but I mean you had some encouraging things to say. Well, good. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's the blue tie mojo or something. It I'm is. not sure what it is, but uh, yeah, it's it's things are going well right now. No, I love that. When we saw each other in the lobby, we we uh, we planned it all out. But we appreciate it, Will K. Wood, and give our best to Jeff Fairman as well. And and thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. We'll have him back at the beginning of 2018. See how things are shaking out then. You know, you can always count on the Fairman Investment Group. Pay them a visit. Give them a phone call, or go to their website now.